All right, so if we do have a graph and we're looking for increasing and decreasing and critical points and all that type of stuff, you can look at your minimum and your maximum. And if we zoom into the graph here, this one's we can look at the graph and say, all right, my x value looks like it's going to be a positive 2 for this critical value, but this one is kind of stuck in between two x values. So at that point, we're kind of out of luck. So what we should do is, well, you tell me, what, what should we do? Take the derivative. So from the function, I need y prime. negative 3x squared plus 4x. That 2 goes away, which is nice. And to find critical points, what do I do next? Yep, set it equal to 0. So I'm going to take negative 3x squared plus 4x, set it equal to 0. Got to factor out here. Well, you could take a negative x or you could take an x. It doesn't really matter. I'm just going to take an x um, and take negative 3x plus 4 is equal to 0. So I'll get x is equal to 0 and negative 3x plus 4 is equal to 0. So that's c1. Now to find c2, we just solve this for x. Subtract 4, so we get negative 3x is equal to negative 4, divide by negative 3, x is equal to 4 thirds. So this guy is now C2. Does that make sense? Alright, so on the graph, I know now that there's C1. And C2 is at 4 thirds, which is right here, C2. So that's going to tell me when I create and when I apply the first derivative test to find the, uh, the intervals where we're increasing and decreasing. I know that I'm going to have a 0. I'm going to have a 4 thirds which is 1.3 repeating, so that might help us when we're actually figuring out test points. Uh, now, are there any discontinuities in this graph? No. Okay, so there's no discontinuities. Now, just looking at the graph, can I tell, what can you tell from the graph itself? There's no global extrema. There's no absolute maximum or absolute minimum. Because this goes to infinity and this goes to negative infinity. Now, are we increasing or decreasing here? Decreasing as I get to this first value. So what should I get when I apply the test? Positive or negative? All right, negative values there. I would agree with that. Now, are we increasing or decreasing here? Increasing, so this should be positive. And now here, this should be negative. That's if you have the graph. If we don't have the graph, pick a test point. What would be a good test point? Yeah, negative 1. What would be a good test point over here? 1. So T2 would be equal to 1, and over here, T3 would be equal to 2. I would agree with all those test points. Would you guys agree with those? Smart. All right, so now what do we do with the test points? Yeah, plug them into the, no, we plug them into the derivative, first derivative test. So what we're looking for are positive and negative slopes of tangents. 
So, for t1 is equal to negative 1, I'm going to get negative 3 times negative 1 squared plus 4 times negative 1. So this is going to be negative 3 plus negative 4, which is negative 7. Does that verify that that was negative here? Yeah. All right. So that checks out. So that was our first interval worked out perfectly. Now for T2, that was equal to 1. I take Y prime is equal to negative 3 times 1 squared minus 4 plus 4 times 1, which would be negative 3 plus 4, which is 1. That checks out. So those two check out. T3, that's a 2. So Y prime is going to be negative 3 times 2 squared plus 4 times 2. Yeah, negative 12, 2 squared is 4, times negative 3. So that's negative 12 plus 8, negative 4. Does that one check out? All right, so can we at this point tell what's increasing and what's decreasing? What are the open intervals? All right, so increasing. Where is it increasing? Okay, it's increasing on the interval from 0 to 4 thirds. And it's decreasing. How do I write this interval? Uh, negative infinity to zero. Yes, negative infinity to 0. And 4 thirds to infinity. Yeah, you can use the union symbol. So it basically combines these two together. It unites them. How do I know that off the graph? So I know my critical values are here. If I were to take some type of straight edge and find a like a, a tangent line here, just an estimate of a tangent line, does that have a positive or negative slope? All right, so that's a negative slope, which means the derivative is negative. Without the graph, this is what you do. You do everything, you basically just cover that up. Take the derivative, set it equal to zero, solve it for your critical values. Look for points of discontinuity. Create your number line. Then find your test points in each little interval that it's created. Then test it, do a sign test. We don't. I don't care that it's negative 7, I just care that it's negative. I don't care that it's positive 1, I care it's positive. So every time you get an interval where it's positive, you know it's going to be increasing on that interval. Yes. Yeah, I'm going to do one of those next. Uh, you have to know which functions are continuous and which ones aren't. Here, it's polynomial. Polynomial functions are always continuous. Where the biggest part is when the denominator is going to be equal to zero. That's going to be one that's going to mess up everything. 
So we look for holes and vertical asymptotes. Basically, denominators are equal to zero. Now, which one do you want to do? Four or five? Four. All right, we'll do four. Yes? Um, not necessarily because your calculator does a pretty terrible job of looking at discontinuities. Uh, you have to be careful when you're graphing on a calculator uh, piecewise defined functions where you have different parts because sometimes they don't match up nice. And then you'll get a situation where you have a line here and then it jumps here. And so it's discontinuous here. I mean, it, that, it'll show that. But if there's a hole, a removable discontinuity, then we're going to get into an issue where it doesn't really show that. So you have to be careful about that part. All right, now let's take a look at number four. Now, at this point, before we even take the the derivative because that'll just set in motion everything we do afterwards um, I would say the first thing we do discontinuities because I know this is rational there's going to be discontinuity at least one discontinuity in this and that's where the denominator is equal to zero So I'm going to take 4x plus 4 is equal to 0. Subtract 4 from both sides. 4x is equal to negative 4. Divide by 4. x is equal to negative 1. So that's a discontinuity. I'll call that d1. Now I need to take y prime. So y is equal to x squared over 4x plus 4. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually do the quotient rule here because I don't think there's any other way to do it. Uh, so I'll take u as the top function, x squared. u prime is what? 2x v is the bottom function 4x plus 4 so v prime is 4 so now y prime is going to be equal to just take the bottom whoops let's put the square in the wrong spot square the bottom part now I'm going to take the derivative of the top times the bottom. So I'll get 2x times 4x plus 4. Now am I going to add or subtract? Subtract. Get x squared times 4. So the bottom stays the same. Distribute this out. 8x squared plus 4x minus 4x squared. So I have 8x squared minus 4x squared. So how many x squareds do I got left? 4x squared plus 4x over 4x plus 4 quantity squared. Lots of fours going on. Factor the top. What? Yeah. Unfortunately, since I'm recording it, that error is there. Good catch. You guys are a little bit more awake than I am right now. First day back from this break is its a tough day. All right. Uh, factor the top. Yeah, pull out a 4x, we'll be left with x plus 2 over 4x plus 4 quantity squared. 
Now for this we want to set the top equal to zero, the numerator. So set this part equal to zero. So I want 4x equal to zero or x plus 2 equal to zero. So what's my x value here? Zero. And x equals negative 2. So this is C1 and this is C2. So I'm going to get an interval. I have a negative 1. The discontinuity from negative 1, I got a negative 2, so I'll put that over here. And then I have a 0, which is over here. Ah, oh, they're going to make us use some fractions. But it should be okay. What's going to happen in the bottom of the derivative? Is it always going to be? You're going to square whatever you get. So this is always going to be positive, which is nice because now I, all I have to do is worry about the top. Now, what test value should I pick over here? Negative 3. Here? Yeah, negative 3 halves, negative 1.5. 3 halves is probably going to be easier to use. The negative 1 is the discontinuity. So this was, this was a critical value, this was a discontinuity, this is a critical value. So here I'm going to use a test value. Negative 1 half. And here I'll use a test value of 1. Well, let's use the 1 first. What if I put 1 in 4x times x plus 2? I get a positive times a positive over a positive. It's all positive. All right, so I know that one's positive, which is nice. Now, here. Negative one half. So negative one half is going to give me a negative what? Times times positive. So it's basically negative times positive over positive. What? This negative two? Oh, I plugged in, this is for t is equal to negative one-half. So negative one-half, half of four is two. So that's your negative two. Since we're only really looking at the top, and I'm running out of space, so let me, here, let me get a piece of paper here so I can do this the right way. Now, for t... For the test value is equal to negative 3 halves, I'll get 4 times negative 3 halves and then you get negative 3 halves plus 2 over po a positive value. So that's negative, right? So it's negative times positive over negative positive which is negative now does that surprise you okay on both sides of the uh, of a discontinuity a lot of times you're going to end up with the same sign But then you're going to square. You're ultimately going to square it, and it's going to make it positive. And then we put negative three in here. So if t was equal to negative three, 
y prime is going to be equal to 4 times negative 3 times negative 3 plus 2 all over a positive value. So this is going to be negative times negative over positive. So we got a positive over here. And the nice thing is, when you get into polynomials that aren't linear, you're just going to see a lot of alternation. You can't assume that it's going to alternate. When you get into discontinuities, you hit, the sign test is a lot more important. Uh, and then we say, all right, because of the first derivative test, we're increasing on negative infinity to negative 2. And zero to positive infinity, and we're decreasing negative two to negative one, and negative one is zero. So we have the open interval there, and this is so we make sure that we don't get a value at negative one. So, to sum it up, to sum it all up, you have to do both because it doesn't exist at negative 1. So if you said it just goes from negative 2 to 0, you're saying that the function exists everywhere in between. So, Right, we just we would we wouldn't even have that negative one there. So first, look for discontinuities. Then you're going to find y prime. Set y prime equal to zero solve for critical values. Now, then you create your number line and f um, plot discontinuities and critical values. Find test points. Perform a sign test on the derivative. If it's negative on the interval, it's decreasing. If it's positive on the interval, it's increasing. So the nice thing is, this is essentially a checklist of things you have to do, a mathematical checklist of what you have to get done.